Hey everyone. Uh, sorry, I um, I only know English, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I'm a little jet lagged, so sorry if I'm like kind of sleepy. Um, but yeah, my body doesn't know that I've slept. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I'm a game artist as well. And um, I uh, actually, I'm going to look at my notes. Um, I'm from Canada and uh, I work with the National Film Board of Canada and with museums and um, I work independently. I'm mostly self-taught. Like uh, I did go to school for um, printmaking for like a couple of years, um, but I found it quite um, like heavy on the alchemy. <laughs> and um, I kind of, I prefer to draw more. And so I kind of like um, moved into animation because it's almost all drawing. So I went like, like complete 180. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, I moved from animating. Uh, I met a friend that kind of like taught me TV Paint, which is a program for um, bitmap animation. <clears throat> and um, because uh, because uh, TV Paint is the software that's taught at the university in my uh, in my town, Montreal. Um, and so I learned that software. Um, I had to crack it at first because it's so expensive, but I worked up to be able to buy it. Um, and uh, since I was already kind of animating in um, on a computer, I sort of like wanted to see where I could take it, like how I can kind of expand upon that. And um, and so I. One day, kind of just was starting to think about like how I can take it to the next level. Like how can I take all of my art to the next level? And I was kind of like thinking about what would be impossible, you know? Because I think that's always sort of like what you think is impossible is sort of actually what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and so at the time, I kind of like, I didn't know how to code. And, um, and so games were kind of like impossible for me. Um, but I uh, decided to throw all that preconception away and I just kind of taught myself how to code. And, um, and then I started making games. Um, so I'll just show you my demo reel um, from this year. Um, so this is a drawing I did. Um, yeah, when I was about 21 years old, I uh, went on like a, a camping trip to British Columbia, which is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And uh, I spent about 30 days kind of just camping on the beach and drawing everything I saw. And um, it inspired me to make uh, one of my films. I'll show you the film. Um, 
So the National Fund Board of Canada is like an is a uh, an institution that funds and produces films, and they've been around for about eighty years. And uh, and so they asked me to make a one minute film, and so I used all my sketches from that trip to make this project. And um, a few of the ideas that I uh, or a few of the concepts that I kind of like picked on for this, I went to use into my games. So this is all pre-game. Oh, actually, sorry, <laughs> this is the wrong one. So thanks. Uh, that was super fun to make. And um, <laughs> so, OK, um, that film kind of like starts on the same uh, screen as it ends on. And um, it you can't really tell, but there's like a structure to it where it kind of like changes at every like interval of beats. And so I kind of wanted to um, kind of like work more in that. Um, so I want to show you a game that I made. Um, Um, so I had just moved to Montreal and I started going to like, um, as you may know, Montreal has like a really great, uh, indie music scene. And, um, so it's kind of like going to a lot of noise shows, I guess. Can't really hear the sound in this. Oh, that was too bad. Um, but the sound's pretty cool. Anyway. So I developed this game um, as part of the Artsy Games Incubator in Toronto. And so I kind of wanted to work more on this like beats um, system. So it kind of, uh, I made, I wanted to make this game sort of like you're going through all the colors. And um, the music kind of, it has like a, a frequency to it. And the frequency goes with the color. It's weird that it doesn't have sound. But um, yeah, so this game, it's really simple. It's mostly just like a, um, an environment for my animations. And it's pretty short. 
But the thing is that it loops. So it comes right back to the beginning. And um, it has this, like, that screen that drags. Like, I'm also in the Unity boat. Um, I prefer it a lot over Unreal. Um, but yeah, so that was my first game. And um, it was uh, it was more of like a an experiment to like learn Unity. But um, I wanted my next game to be a bit more about embarking on an adventure. Um, kind of like inspired from my journey um, when I went and camped on the beach. Um, and so I started, I made a game called Gardenarium. Maybe I'll just show you the trailer before. Oh, good. Doesn't have music. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to play while holding this. Uh, I guess I'll try. Unless, yeah. <laughs> I could just talk about it while you play. Um, so, yeah, this one kind of, um, I wanted to expand beyond the first game, uh, which was called Dream Warrior, I don't think I said. Um, and so this one's in 3D space and it uses um, these like 2D cards that uh, have my animation on it and they kind of just like face you. If anybody wants to make a game that kind of looks like this, I have all the scripts and I could just show you how they work. Um, I also have um, my tablet, which I can kind of like lend to you if you want to draw some uh, assets. I can show you how to export them and make a spreadsheet out of them. So basically the way that I anim I like create these games is by animating the sequence and then turning, like taking the whole sequence and putting it on a spreadsheet, which is a grid of the animations. And then you kind of just plug it into the game engine and it slices it up. And it's an easier way for the engine to like access those animations rather than having to go and open up a different file for every sequence change. That would get like crazy for the for the computer. So the music's by uh, Ylang Ylang, who's a really good friend of mine in Montreal. She's amazing. Yeah, you can go up. Mm -hmm. 
You can't go up this way. <laughs> Maybe you can, but. <laughs> I think you have to go the other way. Yeah. Um, no, back that way. Yeah, be good. Yeah, I kind of just have to follow the like string of flame or whatever. <laughs> I can show you the asset I used to place all of these animations as well. It's, um, it's called um, Prefab Brush. pretty much it kind of like it's just the same thing over and over again <laughs> um but i have another game you can stay <laughs> um so my next game kind of wanted to make it a bit more um funky <laughs> um so i I guess my games are kind of like, they correlate with my friend group. And so I moved from like um, hanging out with noise musicians to like hanging out with like techno musicians. And so. <laughs> so this one's kind of like got all this like crazy techno -y stuff. <laughs> it's kind of janky I had a programmer actually help me with the last one um, so everything's so like smooth and nice but this one I did all on my own like really quickly And I started experimenting with these sequences where you um, lose control um, of the of the scene. It's kind of like goes with the the hand theme because um, yeah, we always want to be in control, but in this world, you have to relinquish that. So all these hands are like standard assets. I actually don't know how to um, model in 3D, so.
I think around this time, I was kind of like really frustrated with, um, I think this was like in 2016, like when uh, Trump was just elected. And um, I felt like such a, an energy of anger in the air. And so I kind of wanted to like channel that into this project. This is actually a level by the comic book artist, uh, Keith Jones. He's a really good friend of mine. He's so talented. So yeah, you kind of have to follow the like running dude. I guess he went ahead, but yeah, you can just go that way. <laughs> oh yeah, there he is. So the musician um, of this song is um, Neo Edo. He's uh, an emerging artist in uh, Montreal. But most of the other stuff is by an artist named Carney. this time I started developing this um you see how those like circles are sort of like layered like that um I started developing a tool where I could layer an animation sequence in that frame um I could show you a, a demo of a game that I made using that tool and I also have the script so I can show you how to use that too Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> the game's free online, so you can download it if you want. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, oh, I guess I didn't finish. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, actually here, I'll just show you the demo of the other game I was telling you about. So around this time, a humble bundle contacted me and wanted to commission a game. And so I developed this game with another talented um, musician from Montreal named uh, Kayla Thompson Hennett, uh, who goes by Cecile Believe and um, She's the voice in all the the new Sophie songs. Yeah, she's good. She's also um, really quick. <laughs> and uh, so this is a game. I think it's it costs like five bucks online, but it's basically like. Um, you kind of have to like t 
press the buttons on the when the moons hit like at the same time so yeah i want to work on that game more but don't have time um so around this time the nfb asked uh me to do another game and um this time i kind of wanted to kind of wanted to bring together all of my inspirations that i've been kind of working on over the years but um kind of uh bring it to another level um and so i started developing um for vr and um some of the themes I wanted to work on kind of beyond the like color spectrum is sort of like the um, kind of like elements that go with the colors and the emotions that go with those colors as well and the shapes that correspond to the colors. And so this is um, an illustration of the platonic solids. And so cube is earth and the earth kind of like represents the heart chakra in this image, which um, is kind of about, it's like right at the heart, right? So it's about love and it's about stability. It's like right in the middle too. So it's about balance. Um, and, uh, and so every level I made kind of like corresponding and kind of like every level is a meditation on each of these uh, elements. And um, so the first level here, I'll just show you a trailer or, okay, I'll show you um, my uh, proposed uh, storyboard of it. Um, so I kind of started by storyboarding all of these ideas, um, but none of this ended up getting used, but I think it was like a good practice to, sort of just visualize the whole game first. Um, so I'll just show you the demo, the trailer. It doesn't really do it justice though. I think the main thing about this game I think the the main appeal is like the the actors or the the characters have like voiceover, and so it's like pretty fun to meet them. Um, here I'll just show you a playthrough that I posted actually. So it's in VR, so I can't show you the actual game. Um, is the loading screen. I don't know if um, anyone's interested in developing for VR, but it's pretty hard. Actually, could I see a show of hands? Is anyone interested in developing for VR? Cool. Um, so one of the tricks that I used in that first um, intro part I try to stay away from any tutorials, but it was important to kind of show people that the like 2D characters are like, you know, you can go up to them. Um, so I kind of like put these like footprints on the floor and you can see the footprints here too. And so the first uh, element in the sequence is a triangle or a tetrahedron. Um, and it's kind of like about passion and at the same time it's about fear and so you kind of have to like conquer your fear in the first level by going to the very edge of the like vr space like you have to kind of like go past the vr edge and uh the next uh element is um air and uh so this girl's kind of like airheaded a bit they're like really distracted and they're like always on their phone and like she uh, gives you a racket to um, basically like be destructive with 
And um, so it's kind of like uh, encouraging you to like be chaotic. And so you're kind of like, it's room scale VR. And so whenever you're like playing it, you're kind of just like tossing it around. So I cut a lot out of the game, but the whole experience is about 20 minutes long. Um, so this is going really quickly, actually. Um, so there's actually two versions of this because uh, it's a Canadian production and so we have to make a French version as well. And um, the French version is actually better because um, we had like celebrity Quebecois actors like doing all the acting. So um, yeah, if you know French, you should and you want to play it, you should play that. This one is also free online, but it's uh, it's only it only works with the Vive and with some uh, Windows Mixed Reality headsets. And so in this level, um, I wanted to play with uh, binary. And so this uh, this level, both of these are a part of Earth level. And so one of them is sort of like, the darkness, and this one's the lightness. Um, but the lightness is kind of like almost darker than the dark level. Like the dark level is sort of like the character just wants to have a party and like, you know, chill. But this, in the, in the light, she's sort of like trapping all the bugs and like trying to control the like, um, the garden. And so she's kind of like, getting mad at you for like watering the stuff. And uh, I, can't, I wanted to play with um, directing the player. It's kind of, she's gonna cry really, really loud for like a while. Um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to play with um, sort of like telling the player to do the opposite of what you have to do. Um, and it actually, it, it works pretty well because most people kind of just want to like see the animations happen and they don't really want to listen to this, um, really like tight person telling you to like not have fun. Um, which I think is kind of like an important lesson sometimes in real life. Like you can't always listen to people. You kind of just follow your, your own bliss. And uh, this level is um, the water level. And so this is kind of like about emotions. And so you're basically like swimming in the ocean of tears of the character from before. And then you go to the deep depths. And then there's nothing left. So I I, uh, I worked with a writer for that one, um, Ashley Ofheim. I think her uh, her artist name is Ashley Obscura, and um, she's amazing. Um, I I wanted to work with her because she uh, she's also really interested in like the geometric shapes that I was kind of showing you. Like um, she has a, a press named Metatron. Metatron's press, which is that cube that like this one, it kind of like contains all the other shapes within it. Um, and so it's kind of like 
in sacred geometry, it's sort of like the shape of the universe. Um, so I, after finishing that game, um, I was contacted by Manchester International Festival to um, make another game. And uh, this time I kind of wanted to build on the sort of the, the freakiness of like the hand game. Um, and so I, uh, I was offered to like work with uh, a musician uh, named uh, Jay Lynn, who's like this really talented um, techno artist who's also extremely quick. Um, and uh, so we kind of, the prompt for this one was um, thinking about a, a post-apocalyptic world that is almost like positive or like a celebration of like um, the end of humanity. Um, and so I kind of developed this game, which is basically about, um, Basically, it's like uh, post-humanity, there's a place, a digital world where you upload your brain. And then um, once you're uploaded, you have to go to the passport office to like uh, get your picture taken. And like, um, and, um, and then you're able to kind of like live in heaven for the rest of your life. Um, but first you have to get to the passport office. And along the way, you uh, kind of like meet all these characters that got lost or like they um, they weren't allowed in. They couldn't get their picture taken. And uh, and they're all kind of like jealous of you because you have another chance. Well, they like fucked up. Um, and uh, again, it's all like techno. So I'll show you the trailer. If you want to download it, it's free online. And again, I got to work with uh, my favorite writer, Ashley, for this one. And um, yeah, it was amazing to get to work with Jalen too. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Now I'm here. <laughs> um, I'm actually working on another game uh, that was originally a commission by the Victoria and Albert Museum um, about the ocean. So that one's coming up. And um, yeah, I try to keep my games free, short. They're usually under 20 minutes. Um, I try to keep them kind of like cyclical because I, uh, I remember like as a kid, I sort of like got really addicted to games. And so I kind of want to avoid that for the future. I don't think that games should be a place where you kind of like... Um, forget about real life. I think it should be kind of like a reminder of what we have in real life and what like unites us and keeps us uh, together and curious about the world. And so, yeah, I think games are a wonderful medium for developing those tools that'll help us uh, be empowered to make the world that we want to see. So yeah, thank you.